Hi guys, Lune here. I am showing you my ancestor altar. Uh, there's also pictures above of my relatives. And this is my altar. You will see on the altar I have an offering dish. I have a candle. I have mementos from my ancestors. I have a beer. I have cigarettes. Uh, I have coffee. And in my offering dish I have chocolate. That is my altar for my ancestors. I use a white cloth. It's traditional for an ancestor altar to use a white cloth. I had someone ask about ancestor altars. Uh, I have mementos and I have pictures. My parents are on there, my parents' family who have all passed on. Uh, my mother-in-law is on there. I consider her an ancestor because she works with me tremendously, especially when it comes to healing. I own her drum. I do a lot of my drum healings with that drum, and she comes through. She is my uh, drum spirit. My drum is hanging on the wall over there. You can see it. Um, you want to offer them things that you know in their history they used. We know that Native Americans used a lot of tobacco. I have a, a Sioux chief in my ancestry. My grandmother, uh, he was her grandfather. Um, you use mementos that remind you of them. I have an angel on my on my altar. I have a <laughs> I have a wooden thing, uh, a wooden a piece of wood that looks like a foot that my mother wrote Bigfoot on. It was something she kept for years. It's a very large piece. I I even have my dog China on there. She, I consider her an ancestor to me. We grew together. We were together 14 and a half years. Um, I consider her an ancestor to me. Uh, I know that we were connected in past lives. I have an auntie on there that is an auntie-in-law. She is uh, an auntie-in-law. She is my uh, husband's aunt and was extremely powerfully important to me. Um, I have an elephant on there that belonged to my mother-in-law. I have a little saying on there, a little plaque that says... Uh, I can't read it from this far. Memories you love because a memory will last forever and these are treasures. Uh, I have another little plaque on there that just says family number, uh, family is first. Um, I have coffee because I know that my ancestors drank coffee. Uh, the cigarettes are because my parents both smoked. The beer is because they loved beer. So did my Auntie Barbara. So did my mother-in-law. Um, I have brandy up there. A little a little jar of brandy because my mother loved E&J brandy and so did my dad. So I have that up there. Alcohol is a great thing to include. Uh, I have a small crystal ball that is amethyst. I have that up there to give me a psychic connection to them. Um, you'll notice that, no, we're going to talk about that in a different, in a different uh, video. So I, I, have, uh, I also have a little jar there that has things from my father. Um, it has a flint case in it from uh, Zippo Lighter because that's all he ever used. It has uh, a, a little card from his funeral that had a poem on it. It has his name and, and death date and birth date. It has a flower from his um, wreath at his funeral. It has notes that he wrote to me, songs he was beginning to write, um, just mementos of my father. Uh, I lost my father a long time ago. I was 26 years old when I lost my father, which in my opinion is just way too young, and we were very, very close. So I do a lot of... of uh, what's the word, reverence towards my father. My mother and I were best friends. I do a lot of reverence towards my mother. My grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, um, the Indian chief, I know his name, but I've completely went blank. Uh, I work with him quite often, especially when healing and working with my Native American things, my rattle and my drum. Uh, my mother-in-law works with me tremendously with my rattle and my drum, especially my drum. Uh, my grandmother is the one who taught me dousing and healing with my hands. So I work with her quite often when healing. My grandfather, 
I didn't get to know very well, but I have reverence and love and respect for him. I have ancestors on here from my father's side that I didn't even really know. Um, ancestors from my mother's side that I didn't really know. You know, um, a pen that my mother used when she was a nurse. She never used any other pen. That's the one she used. So that gives you an idea of what you want to have on your altar. Uh, I suggest a white cloth. It's very traditional. It brings in white light energy. You really want to keep your altar energized. I offer offerings. And um, oftentimes an offering can just be a little glass of water. Uh, so, so that I work with that daily. I work with my altar daily. A candle is lit daily towards my ancestors. Um, now we're going to talk about that a little uh, more in a different video about uh, dressing candles and how to do so for uh, dressing candles. And so uh, underneath that altar, there's a couple of doors. I'm sure you saw them in that in that underneath part with the doors. I have ashes of my ancestors, um, some of them. Uh, what else do I have in there? Some of my healing tools are in there because I work mostly with my ancestors when I'm doing healing. Okay. Uh, the person who posted this question uh, about ancestor altars and how to work with them and how, when not to work with them. So we'll talk about how to work with them. When I am doing a spell of any sort, I call upon my deity, Hecate, to come with me and lend me her energies and her guidance in this spell. I do the same thing with my ancestors. I call upon them to please come work with me and help me with this spell and give me guidance and uh, the intuition I need to use the right things towards the spell. I do the same thing with sea gods and goddesses. I don't have names for my sea gods and goddesses, but I do work with them. I have a beautiful sea altar. Let's see if you can see it from here. I don't know if you can. Next to my air conditioner, there are all kinds of shells. Um... My candle is usually there. You can see that it's on my table right now because it, uh, the air conditioner will put it out when it's that high. I have a mermaid over there. Uh, I hope I'm on the right thing. I hope you can even see it. At any rate. So I have a sea altar. And so I do work with uh, sea gods and goddesses and spirits to, to come in and lend energy. So when you're working with ancestors, what you're doing is asking them to lend you their guidance, their energy, some intuition. Um, and you don't want to just work with them again, like servitors when you need something. You want to talk to them. You want to reverence them. You want to respect them. You want to communicate with them. You want to thank them for the heritage and the lessons. Um, also working with ancestors Again, hard to explain, but there is a way to go uh, into shadow work and work through their bad karma. Uh, you know, karma travels in lines of ancestry. And when I work to heal the karma of my ancestors, I'm not doing that just for my ancestors' sake or my sake, but my children's sake. Uh, I don't want them to have the type of karma that that I know is not going to lend them something healthy or uh, beneficial. So I work with my ancestors who work through their karma in shadow work. How do you do that? That's a hard one to explain and probably a whole new video, but you work on a different plane, a, a different dimension. You go into the hedge so to speak, with hedge witches, you'll understand what that means. You go into the hedge and you heal the transgressions. You forgive the ancestors for their, for their uh, mistakes or, uh, you know, the, the things that they have done that have brought this karma, you forgive them for it. You heal the bond between the good thing they could have done instead of the bad thing they did do and or I shouldn't say bad thing but you understand what I mean the discretion and and you explain to the energies why this was 
the uh, reaction to whatever it was. You know, they were raised a different way. They came up a different uh, time, and this was what was taught to them, and they can only do what they were taught. They were not given the tools to react in a different manner and so on and so forth. And you, it's hard to explain, but you, you heal that wound between what was done and what could have been done, so to speak. I, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but that is also working with ancestors. When not to work with ancestors. I do not work with my ancestors when I'm in a mood. I don't want to give them energy that is negative because that's not fair to them. They, they give me no negative energy. I will not, I refuse to give them negative energy. If you are drunk or even drinking a lot, do not work with ancestors or any other spirit. Don't do spells if you are drunk. Uh, having a glass of wine while you're doing a spell or a beer while you're doing a spell, uh, especially when working with ancestors, is reverence. You know, you're honoring them. But, you know, getting drunk and working with your ancestors is probably not a great idea. Uh, when not to work with ancestors that were okay so a lot of people say don't work with your ancestors during a dark moon i personally don't don't adhere to that uh belief i do work with my ancestors when working uh i hate using terms like dark spells or left-handed spells but i do work with my ancestors when working those spells which are best work during the dark moon um I don't have any other time when I don't work with my ancestors unless I'm in a mood of some sort that's negative or not at all uh, beneficial to either of us. You don't want to go visit your best friend when you're in a shitty mood. So you don't do that. Um, I don't work with my ancestors when I'm drinking a lot. Uh, to have a beer again or a glass of wine is one thing, but to be drinking a lot, I don't work with them. Um but working with them is calling on them very often to help you with your spell work, to help you with your studies, to help you when putting a spell in a book that you use the right wording. Um, they can they can literally do a million things with you. Be sure to show gratitude. Be sure to show reverence. Be sure to have an altar. Don't just call on your ancestors to help you and have no contribution to contribution to them. Um, you, you want to, I'm not saying worship your ancestors, but be grateful for your heritage. You are who you are because of them. You have had the experiences you've had because you were given a life by them. And so you want to have great respect and you want to work with them on a regular basis. You don't want to just sit an altar up there and never give them, uh, an offering. You don't want to sit it up there and never speak to them. You know, it's not just a, you don't want a memorial. You want a place to work with your ancestors, and that's very important. So I guess I've kind of covered most of that. I do use uh, my ancestors' ashes, ashes, <laughs> ashes in uh, spells. When I am working with a spell where I definitely need more help from them, and not when I'm working with a spell for another person. I do not use that for strangers. But when I am working a spell that's important to me or one of my children, I do use their ashes as uh, added energy from them to, to really boost that, uh, that help that I know they can give me, that guidance, that intuition, and uh, the power and the energy that they can lend to that spell. Um, I use it in my ancestor oil. I even use it in a certain black salt, which I've been criticized for. Um, salt is supposed to take away uh, entities and and spirits and so forth. But I don't I don't use it in a way uh, to pull them to me. I'm using it in a way for protection. So I believe that their ashes lend protection to that. And I don't believe it takes their ashes and dissolves them from what they are or what they were because it's salt. Um, I don't know how to really explain that, but it means something to me and it works for me. So I do it. And I know I will get criticism for that again, but that's okay. I, I do what I do. You do what you do. 
again, when I'm explaining things, please use your own intuition. Don't just do what I'm telling you to do or what I'm saying, because that's my perspective. That's my take on it. But you have your own intuition. You have your own uh, way of doing things. And that's important that you don't just copy someone else, but you come up with your own, uh, so to speak, traditions and, and, uh, reverence and respect and communication and that type of thing. Just remember to have that reverence, respect, communication, honor your heritage. Don't, uh, don't, Use it in a way, use yourself in a way that is positive. Don't create more uh, karma that may not you suit your children or their children or their children. You know, we're, we're here to heal that, those old wounds. We're not here to create them. So uh, carry yourself in a manner that is respectful to your ancestors um, and continues to heal their karma. Uh, you know, our ancestors... Some of them were slave owners and some of them were slaves. And we want to heal that relationship. We want to heal that uh, misguidedness because in their day, that just was the way it was. Uh, and they need to forgive themselves for that. And we need to forgive them for that. And there's a lot of uh, controversy going on in the world right now because of that type of thing. But uh, there's that. And, you know, some of them may have been... Uh, abusers in some way and we need to heal that and and so on and so some may have been alcoholics some may have been whatever so we're we're here to heal that and to work with them and to I'm rambling and I'm gonna let you go at any way you understand what I'm saying and so if you have any questions please post them I'd be happy to answer them I love you guys you're all divine sacred beings of light and love I love each and every one of you with all my heart stay safe Stay strong. Stay indoors if you can. Uh, you know it's not over yet. And, and just really focus on this energy with your ancestors. I, it's invaluable. Me working with my ancestors is invaluable. I could not create the things that I create or do the spells that I do in as powerful a manner without them. And I truly believe that 100%. I hope this helps you. I uh, wish you luck in your endeavors. Please, please, please know you're extremely, extremely admired for joining me. And, and I'm grateful to you. Thank you for being part of my life and for thinking I have something to offer you. If Again, if you have any questions, please post them. I'd be happy to answer anything. If I don't know it, I'll find it out. You know that that's my motto. If I don't know the answer, I will find the answer. I love you. Have a great day, guys. You might see me again. Bye.